My name is Paul. For those of you that don't know who I am, um, I'm the lead pastor out at uh, Lighthouse Christian Center in Port Angeles, Washington. Uh, been in children's ministry for, man, 15 years. And I've uh, been, uh, been doing that, but I'm uh, lead pastoring now for the last uh, two years. I'll be coming into my th- the start of my third year, December 7th. And um, so uh, in this class, if you're here, you are going through uh, Countering the Culture of Gender Confusion, uh, Fusion 2016. Here we go. You ready for this? All right. So February 23rd, 1940. Anybody remember what happened on that day? You got your answer right there. Come on, Pinocchio was re- Pinocchio was released. In the movie, Jiminy Cricket sang the famous lyrics to a little wooden boy who wanted to become something uh, something completely different. He wanted to be something different. Such uh, a touching tale. However, in our day, people no longer apply the inspirational messages in traditional ways. Anything your heart desires has been stolen. Before I go any further, I want to open up in prayer because this is a tough topic and I'm going to just be completely honest with you. This is one that's been, uh, uh, yeah, it's been, I've been wrestling with this one and I've been talking to my team, my staff and saying, hey, what are we doing here? How are we working through this? So I'm scratching my head. They're scratching their head. They're, they're giving me, I'm saying, how would you approach your parents? How would you approach, approach your kids on this, on this, uh, this, this situation? And um, so let's bow our heads, let's close the prayer, or excuse me, open in prayer and we'll get going on this. Lord, we just thank you for today. God, I pray, Lord, as we talk about a very sensitive topic. God, I pray that you would just come and you would meet us here. Holy Spirit, that you would guide our discussion. God, we just need your wisdom. God, we need you in, in this time. God, we ask that you would be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, I don't believe that Walt Disney ever thought or ever imagined such slogans inspiring people to remake themselves. Uh, but now we see the spread of culture that is a gender confused and a major worldview ch- uh, challenge to the church. Now I'm going to stick to my notes as best I can and I'm going to try not to digress because we only have a certain amount of time. So, um, uh, But if I do, you have the notes. If you want anything, you I have more right here. Yes. Here you go. And... Um, and so, uh, if you if you're wanting these in uh, not just the hard copy, I'm more than free to give these out. Just find me on Facebook. I'll send it to you. It's it's all there. So um, find me, uh, Paul N. Shuri King. That's our Facebook. We have one together. And so just just Facebook us, and uh, and we'll be more than happy to uh, get that to you. But I don't believe that 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 uh, Walt Disney ever thought that this would happen. And as we think about this idea of countering the culture of gender confusion, it's it is happening in every area of life, from education to entertainment to uh, from media to marketplace, and from cities and, and, and counties to courts and churches. And we have seen a rapid change that has taken place just since today's senior hires were born. Look at this, 1997. Ellen DeGeneres comes out. Featured on the cover of Life magazine, Time magazine. 2004, same-sex marriage was uh, ordered by the Supreme Court of Massachusetts, the first state to redefine marriage. Glee, anybody fans of Glee? Great show, love it. Was a part of a Glee club myself, of which it wasn't called Glee then at the time. Uh, but we just being a part of a musical groups. But we see that there is a, a focusing, a storyline focusing on a male character identifying as gay. 2012, we see Obama finally evolved on the issue um, of, ma- of marriage, fully supporting two men and two women. And so how about today? Now, I, 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 a lot of us have probably been labeled what's in here, homophobes, bigots, so on and so forth, haters, you know, and, and, and you know, it's, it's out there, it's happening. We have, a, if, if you like me, one of my strengths is, if you've taken Strength Finders 2.0, one of mine is belief. I have high morals, standards, values, and um, you're not going to, there's probably not too much you're going to sway me on when it comes to some things. Um, but when it comes to this, I have to go, okay, God, how do you see this? How do you see this? 
And, and so some questions parents might be asking, such as, how do I talk to my children about homosexuality? How do I protect their innocence but also prepare them for the world around them? How many of you have kids that are under the age of five? Okay, they're, they're in a whole different culture now. I have two. They're coming in completely different. Completely different. The way that it was even for me in high school, and, and Dan said he graduated college in 1999. That's the year I graduated high school was 1999. And, um, and so uh, looking at that, what it was then, 1999, okay, there was some of that that was out there. There was some talk about this, but there was not nearly what it is today. Not nearly what it is today. Um, and, and how do you build into them a biblical worldview of gender and sexuality? Well, these are questions that you might be asking. Look at this. Why did I decide to come to this workshop? You're probably asking yourself that question. I came to this workshop because I just wanted to come to a workshop. I guarantee you, you're going to probably walk out of here going, where is this at? My head is spinning. I have no idea how I'm going to handle any situations. My hope is, is that this is just a starting point. This is not the end all. Please understand that. When Brent asked me to do this, I was like, Brent, you got to be kidding me. You're giving me the topic of this? And, uh, and, and I've been running with it and trying to run with it as best I can. Um, a lot of us in ministry are trying to figure out this whole idea of gender confusion uh, thing right along with parents. And, we're, and we are not quite sure how to approach or even answer some of these questions besides our own. So my hope is, is by the end of this workshop that you will have a starting point. Notice I said starting point. A starting point that you can have an idea to take back with you to think about individually with your team, staff, and parents. And so over the next few minutes, and there's going to be quite a bit of time here. Like I said, I don't know how this is going to be recorded because you're going to get into groups. And, um, or, or maybe we just open it up. Um, but just for the next few minutes, we're going to look at some scenarios to help us think through how we would respond to situations that may arise in our ministries doing, uh, doing life with people, etc. So here's the first scenario. You got it right there. A child has, has been introduced to the idea that a person can change genders... And told that transgender means the sex a person is born with doesn't match the sex they feel, they feel like inside. Their head and their heart. How do you respond to that? How do you respond to that? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Think on that for just a moment because because I'm doing the same thing. This is this isn't just something that's 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 just that, that you know we're just able to walk through and just have this great pat answer and say this is how you do it, you know. It, there's not like point one, point two, point three. Walk through this steps and you've got it all made. No, each one is completely different. How, how would you respond to that? Yeah. I would be more technical. I would talk about hormones. Yeah, I'm very scientific minded. And then I would take the idea that estrogen and testosterone, you're still in a developing phase, and girls can be tomboys, and boys can play with Barbies. However, who you are is female or male, whoever I'm talking with, and explain to them that God made them that way because that was who they are, period, end of story. And these feelings are just relating to the world, but actually your hormones. It's just that easy. <laughs> That's how I would come at it. Somebody else. I think the confusion is not <clears throat> just for their... I think it's the messages that they're receiving. So the confusion... So I underline the circle of the word confusion. The confusion comes from the mis-messages and the overabundance of messages. So you're actually dealing with an issue of the mind. I think first. I think it's the... The fact that Facebook inundates them, now the school inundates them, and the education, so they're inundated, so I think you're, um, you're, you're having to have rationale with students that are dealing with things at a young age that are they're not even able to comprehend some of them. So then that causes more confusion, more hurt, more psychological stuff. So I, I think maybe, I, you know, I'm not, that's not an answer, but I'm just saying that's got to be something I think that's addressed. Kids got too many messages. Mm -hmm. and filter it. And then, of course, 
Scripture clearly states that this type of behavior is a sin. Period. You can't. And then I'm depending on the age of the child. You need to let them know that God does not give you a choice. God does not, even though the world says it's okay. And then be prepared to know your scriptures. We know the Romans wrote, but then we need to know as Christians what is pleasing to God and what is not. You know, I think that it's, it's our responsibility to, and I think everyone in this room agrees with you, to guide and to teach to learn what's true. But the problem is there, there's no absolute truth in society anymore. And, and you know, uh, especially like those of us in, in children's history, you know, we do our best to impart truth, but if we're lucky, we have them maybe four hours a week versus how many hours are they being influenced by ungodly things or, or, or um, either in the home or outside the home. Uh, I mean, uh, even godly parents can't protect their children from every ungodly thing out there, and they get exposed to it. I mean, even starting next school year, uh, Washington State is adding gender identity teaching to kindergartners. Kindergarten. Um, and we have just so confused them. Uh, no wonder they don't know who they are. It's because... We have confused the living daylights out of them, like you said. And uh, there was even an article in the uh, Spokesman Review just not too horribly long ago, and it was like a five, six, it was a massive article about this child who was going through this gender identity crisis and sex change and all of that. And I just, I just shake my head at how we've allowed it to get to that point where kids don't know who they are because we've so confused them. Yeah. I think even just acknowledging it with your kids to say, hey, you know what? You're, this is the reality of the world we live in. And you have to do it on their level, but don't shield them from the fact that this is really happening. And just say, hey, you know what? You're going to hear the, that some people think it's okay that you can choose to be a boy or a girl, but God didn't give us that choice, and we want what's best. God always has our very best in mind. So we want to do it God's way. Mm -hmm. and so, But for me, I just, straight up, on, on their level, but I tell them the truth. But, because you can't shield them from everything. So give them the tools and equip them and empower them to, to know what's going on. One of the difficult things here um, is that unique to any other sort of ministry is... A lot of these conversations we can't have in the void of just a kid. Yeah, that's we have to be a, a kind of a family conversation because, yeah, um, and I think a lot of times we can get we can get stuck in this cycle of addressing the symptoms. Um, and I, this is I'm living this with with the presidential situation of things with kids with elementary kids that have very strong opinions of this that or the other thing. Um, and uh, even if we have a weekday preschool and um, just some, some things that were said between uh, uh, kids of uh, ethnicity and non-ethnicity um, that were really surprising. And that's coming from mixed messages that they're getting free. And I think that was really an accurate read, but also it's what they're getting at home. Yeah. And so um, to frame this whole conversation, man, don't, if it hasn't been had, don't we need to go back to our teams and our church staff and say, hey, can we have a conversation about this? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of this and the way that this is handled at your church needs to come from the top down. Mm -hmm. so. I think it's two things, Paul, real quick. Yep. I think it's also in that is removing fear from us, talking about what Al said yesterday, removing the fear that we can talk about what our true identity is. So empower our teams top down. And then also empower parents. Yeah. Yes. 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 Conversations yeah. with not just one or two, you can, but the group. Help them to know how to communicate with their kids. So yes. many kids they're fearful to communicate they with their own kids. What. They, don't yeah. they don't know how to, they don't know how, it's the same thing as sex ed used to be. Now it's right. this. Mm -hmm. And so I think that we need to be the church, the church needs to lead. So I put some just some responses in here just so you can see it and uh, you can speak the truth. Celebrate that God created us male and female and being boy and girl is a special gift and a blessing from God. And uh, 
Go back to Genesis. Go back to the very beginning. You know, use Scripture. It says, So God created man in His own image. In the image of God, He created him. Male and female, He created him. Genesis 1.27. You know, speak affirmation. Use encouraging statements that affirm gender identity. And, uh, you know, emphasize compassion, love, and kindness for people. Even though uh, not everyone follows God's design or believes in it. Now, that's a tough one. Okay, like I said, I have a huge... The belief factor in me, man, they're strong. Strong. And, um, and and so I have to be careful that the flesh doesn't come out. And I'm telling you, I'm walking through this right now, even in my in my in my own in my own church. I'm walking it out. I have a, 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 a transgender in my in my in the ministry. Have I just gone in and just said, boom, sorry. No. What is the first thing that we notice is that we we love first, right? And and we and it, okay, so we accept. Now hear me on this. I'm not saying that I accept that what they're doing is right, but I love and accept them for who they are as an individual. Yeah. Okay, they're a person. That's a person who's walking through a hurt, whatever it may be. Right? Yeah. And that's what we're talking about this weekend is that they, they need a connection. They need a body of believers that can come around them and love on them for where they're at in their walk right now. This individual that, that, that I'm connecting with is, is um, says they're on fire for God. They're in their word. How can I, how, how can I you know, deny that? That they've got this amazing relationship with God and they're like studying the word and they're in these groups and it's like okay so that's a mask I know that it's a mask to say I'm going to do this in order to make everything feel right inside right so I know that but I can't go to that individual and start blasting them and saying you got this all wrong it, you know how you're thinking your thinking is totally off base no I can't do that because what's going to happen you don't love me. You don't care about me. You don't want me here. And they start pushing him away. And then it's like, whoa, wait a minute. No, no, no. We care about them. We love them. Now, that's tough. That's tough. And so the, there's some, some tips that we can do. Uh, avoid overreacting, shaming, and ridiculing a child for opposite gender role playing. Rather, simply redirect and affirm when necessary. Here's the second one. Here's the second scenario. Like I said, I don't have all the answers. You guys are going to have to take this and run and, and, and sit down with your teams. Uh, again, as Eric said, start from the top down. Work in the staff, however that looks, whatever that looks like, and, and, and let that kind of trickle out. But you're going to have to have conversation. That that's where it starts. You're gonna have to op- you're gonna have to open it up and have a conversation. Uh, here's the second scenario. So a boy dressed as a girl is attending your children's ministry. It doesn't matter what ministry. They're there in your church. Children have encountered the new boy and are confused about it. How do you respond? We got signs that say that say men only, women only, right? How do we how do we, how do you respond? There's so much running through my head right now. <laughs> I'm telling you. But my thought goes back to you. First, you have to have in your church kind of a protocol on how you're going to handle this. What if a girl walks in with a very slinky, revealing? Outfit. Most likely you would say this is an appropriate attire for this. And so you probably have some sort of a dress code. You can't, especially in the teenage groups, you know. So, so there is a standard that the church sets. And I think now, instead of talking about the length of miniskirts and, you know, the tightness of the guys, whatever, I mean, now we may have to add this to a protocol. But I think about when the woman who was caught having an affair, and what did Jesus do? He said, he who was without sin cast the first stone. But he didn't leave it at that. He looked at her and said, sin no more. We can't turn our eye to sin. We can't say, oh, it's okay, you're working through your issues. 
we can say to the wife beater, the dr well, not the wife beater, because then it becomes a, a life-threatening issue, but to the drunk, to the addict, to the sinner, our door is open, come in, we love. The sin is sin. We can't code it and say, this behavior is acceptable. We can say, we will love you, we will work through you, but you with you, and we will pray with you, and we will always as Christians embrace Jesus came for the lost. He didn't came, come for the righteous. That has been his whole ministry. But never did Jesus say, it's okay to continue this way. You can continue to sin. We, we have a judgment coming and putting it now and trying to let people think this might be okay. It's God made it clear to us. Sin is sin and we can't condone it. And that's all I got to say. Okay, so real life situation. My third grade daughter, um, there's a little girl in her class um, who wants to be a boy. She dresses like a boy. She wants to do boy things. She thinks girl things are yucky. So um, if this little girl was to come to church with my daughter, she would want to go to Royal Rangers. She wouldn't want to go to girls' ministries. So um, listening to what you're saying there, in practicality and reality, do I really walk up to a third grade eight-year-old girl and say, I'm sorry, but you're sinning? You're no. not dressed appropriately. Like we can't say that no, because at she, home, no, I'm not saying it's obviously allowed. I'm saying, yeah. too. I'm saying there's standards, and we can You can't allow that. No, this is for boys. You're a girl, so you have to go to this group. You're not allowed to go to Red Rangers. Believe me, when I was in third grade, I wanted to go to the teenage groups, but they wouldn't let me. They said rules, and I had to follow them. You so know. I'm kind of curious to get other people's yeah, perspective just, on that. Yeah. So it's a she comes to church, church, she wants to go to Rangers. You know, in other countries, she, she feels, feels comfortable going Rangers. to Rangers. I like more Rangers. She I mean, she's she's not going to come back if I say you have to go to girls' mm -hmm. ministries. So. I want to go to Rangers and say, you know what? We, we've got this for girls, but I, I, you know what? If you want to hang out with the boys, just go ahead and tell them. I would, I would, if this is me, I would notify my commander and say, hey, you know what, yeah, mm -hmm. this is the situation. Can you just love on her and show her the love of Jesus? And then let the Holy Spirit do what the Holy Spirit does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just let her be one of the kids. But that's, that would be my approach. And my, right? my and, and I'm just going to jump in because I'm not going to let the conversation get too heated. But, but I hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And what I want to say to this is that maybe... That's part of the reason why there is a pull mm -hmm. between Rangers and Girls Ministries because we have said if you're not a part of, if you're not a male, you don't get to be here. And if you are not a female, you don't get to be here. Hence the reason why we're seeing a lot of people going to Awanas. Why? Because it's gender mixed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just going to say that. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that Rangers and Girls Ministries is bad. No, I was grown up on it. Is important. It is important. Yes. But I think we're starting to see, though, that there's a shift in culture because of the fact that people are wanting to you know, there's just this, this, there's, there's this, like, okay, what do we do? Like, it is a real question. I think the, the, uh, what was said already about a protocol the church has, right? And and what's so critical is building relationships with the child, like what was said last night, building relationships with the child, building relationships with the parent, because. If a, if a child's coming in dressed up, there is support from that family. Mm -hmm. But not to cut the family off, but but to start building a relationship with yeah, them, those parents. It could be a single mom mm -hmm. that needs help. But going back to uh, the truth is we've got to get the truth in their head so much they're so filled with the truth. We've got to get the, them to speak out in boldness, and you start with sharing the story of God every single year creation the whole story of God and getting the truth in them and knowing what the voice of and start starting young but like what was said last night uh, having relationships with people and loving and speaking truth speaking the truth of God what would God say about this? And, well, and then I'm, when I'm dealing with stuff like this, it's like Holy Spirit is kick, you, you yourself have to be so full of the Holy Spirit, so full that only His words are going to come out of you as you speak life into these children who are hurting. 
And so, uh, yes, it is a sin. Yes, Jesus would call out it, but he always did it in love. Mm -hmm. And and have a plan. No, no, I did it. I did it. So it's just just getting the the truth in, getting the truth in. In our heart that this is not okay, but we do. But we also know an alcoholic is not okay, but we still love them. Right. And and I think we can't get that confused. Go ahead, Matt. I don't want to ask an unfair question, bro, because there's no answer for this, number one. Like, that's, that's tough, dude, and that's touche, my friend. But, but I, have hard, I have a hard time because I lean both ways yeah. on this, honestly, because I, I see your side as far as, like, that, that's grace. That's, that's what that is, is grace, is we're going, okay, there's grace here, like, God's given us that grace. And the same grace that he's given to me, I need to show to others. But actually, the other side, I go, there's truth. Yeah. And I go, and, and I, honestly, like, I'm not that old, I don't think. I don't feel that old. But, like, I feel like there's a big change. Yeah, I know, I'm getting a little older. I, there's a big change because we give kids too many options. And we say, yeah. it's okay. Like, you know, I don't want to offend you, and I don't want to hurt your feelings. So, I want you to go to Royal Rangers. But then there's a, there's, there's a heart of me that goes, I love kids, and I don't want this little girl to, yeah. to feel outcasted. Mm-hmm. Or, But then I go, is that the problem? Mm-hmm. Is that where this is coming from? Is this coming from the fact that we're going, I don't want to outcast you, I don't want to put you outside of this, so I'm going to accept your sin, because what we're saying, without yeah. saying it. We're saying we're, we're, we're going to accept... But and does then the it, child know at that age that it's a sin? Exactly. No, and they don't. Yeah, because, especially when it's coming. Because at that age, they don't know that that's a sin. They've never been taught But I think that goes into my next, the next portion, which goes back to what Doreen said. Again, I'm not saying, I, I have no answer. I'm just playing both sides of the fence here. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing a good job of it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but like what Doreen said, like we really, I think we really need to resource parents. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm going to, I'm going to, because I want you, here's the thing. Remember what I said at the very beginning? <laughs> what did I say at the very beginning? No answer. This is just a starting point. Yeah. Yeah. Hear me on that. Okay. This is not the end all answers. This is just to get your minds thinking. I, you know, I, as I'm as I'm looking at this, and I'm going through this even in my with my, one of my staff members sitting right here, and I'm going, we have this conversation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm racking my own brain, and I'm going, how do we do this? Yeah. How do I deal with this? How do I? How do you walk through this? You've got people that are coming from from outside, and we do girls ministries and rangers, and we're like here. This is where you go. It doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 but I'm just like, this is just a starting point. This is like, you, man, you, you're just you're just digging the trenches for the foundation. You know what I'm saying? You're you're in the you're you're digging it. That's what you're doing right now. We're not even. We haven't put walls up. We haven't even put the cement for the foundation yet. We haven't done anything. You're just formulating thoughts yeah. to get you thinking about what if. When, yeah. how, yeah, exactly. it will. <laughs> where do I go? Yes. And, you're, and, and, and your your mind is just spinning, and and so yeah, this might be a deep a deep question for some of us to be thinking about. Who knows? How do how, you know? And so so just be thinking about that. Remember that as you're going through this, and as we're talking about it, this is just the starting point. This is not this is not a step one, step two, step three kind of thing. And and I and that's why I've been wrestling with this for the last four weeks, putting it together because of the fact that I have I, I'm struggling with it. Uh, it's hard. It's hard to wrap your mind around. So yes, I've been dealing with it for. Probably 18 years. I'm 38 years old now. My brother, he went into full-blown homosexuality um, late high school, right out of high school. And he's been in and out of it, and he's been married to a guy once they passed all that, divorced from the guy, all kinds of abusive relationships. I mean, I've seen nothing but hell from it, right? And um, originally when it came about... I mean, I hated him. I hated him for what it was doing to my parents. We were raised Christian. We were raised, you know, that's a sin. He took that road. He's still on that road today with another guy. Um, So I started thinking, I mean, back before 
and well, especially once I started having kids. I have four kids, and I started thinking, okay, how am I going to talk to them? Because they're going to they're going to know their uncle. They're going to know, you know, they're at some point in time they're going to see him with, right? You know, right. I mean, so I started praying about it and I talked to my wife about it, and what we did is. We got online and we got to looking, and there's a there's a four book series called God's Design for Sex. Um, it's age appropriate, starting at the little guys, book one, age whatever to whatever, and then so on and so forth. Um, what I have found is adults need to be reminded of God's design for sex. There's a lot of adults that come to know the Lord that don't realize God's design for sex because they've never been taught that as a child. Mm -hmm. And as the public school system, I have one child in the public school, the rest of them are homeschooled, and they all were homeschooled until two years ago. And so for me it's been easy because they don't have that outside influence. But I was in the public school, I know what that influence is there. That's one reason I homeschooled like I did for the kids. Um, I think the Christian schools and the churches need to find a way to implement their own um, like the public schools do and their mm -hmm. sex program they're pushing all this on the kids I think churches are afraid churches, I mean when I, when I grew up nobody talked about it it was a hush hush you didn't talk about it but the public schools were talking about it I mean they're not afraid to talk about it we can't be afraid to tell our kids the truth about sex. And like you said earlier, it's a gift. I mean, the book is real clear. It's a God-given gift. Mm -hmm. Nothing to be ashamed of. You know, your gender is special to you. You're a boy created by God, a girl. I mean, it goes right through it. And real kid-friendly. And uh, But adults need to read the books. I mean, need to, need to be reminded of God's design for sex. As adults, like I said, from the top down, and if, if churches and Christian schools could implement God's design for sex, there'd be a whole lot less confusion when they and their kids are encounter, encounter the public world. You know, because I told my wife, if we don't teach our kids the truth, they'll believe a lie. It's just the way it is. Yeah. And so if they don't know, right. then when they do encounter that, that's when the confusion comes. But if they already know, right. and then those that don't know, if they you know if they come to church, if there was a way to implement that, then those from the world coming in, unbelievers, or, or a girl dressed like a boy, or a boy dressed like a girl, you know, for those reasons. Yeah. I mean, I, I grew up with tomboys. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately one of them did go that route. Because it was, I mean, to slowly progress that way. But some of my own cousins that are God-fearing, you know, Christian people, you know, raising good families right now, um, I mean, they want to do boy things, right? So, Paul, you know, Paul right. can I just um, answer the question, too, for what, when you have this scenario, so we have this scenario, he came to youth group for six months as a boy and then returned as a girl a month later. And what everybody wanted, the question, the elephant in the room was, number one, if you don't have the scenario in place for how you respond, mm -hmm. they will react. Mm -hmm. So if you can coach your leaders in advance, how are we going to respond? Not how we're going to react. So just like if there's a crisis in your church, mm -hmm. the pastor gathers a team and says, now how are we all going to respond? So in other words, it's not a pat answer, it is the truth answer. So you need a response, you need a protection, guidelines in place. So you need to collaborate and go to bigger churches, find their guidelines. Life Center has guidelines. Go to, go to a place that's already crossed this bridge, get your guidelines and, and how to protect your kids while still speaking truth and love. All those things are true, yes. Yes. but helping, helping your staff to have an answer that's a loving answer and a response, not a reaction, is best. Okay, I got a question for you, just really quick. How many of you are just leaders? And I'm not meaning this in a bad way, but how many of you are just leaders that you're you don't have, you don't hold a volunteer? You are a volunteer. Okay, how many of you are 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 a part time or even a full time at a church? Okay. 
This, do you see why this is important? Yeah. Why everybody has to hear this? Yeah. Not just, I mean, we're, we're, we're at leadership, right? Yeah. That's what we're talking about here. We're at leadership level. Volunteers have to know this too. Yes, they do. So guess what? You've just been empowered. Yeah. And be empowered. Be, there's going to be legal. Oh, there's going to be a lot of stuff. Because right. You know, legally, you'll have to have something on paper. Right. right. Really quick, because I want to get to the third scenario. You know, of course, if they walk through the doors, we have to deal with it. But, you know, as far as standing for the truth goes, you know, like I said, Washington State, starting next school year, is implementing a brand new health standard other than the sexual education standard, fitness uh, for K through high school. Uh, and they are even in kindergarten starting to address some of these gender identity things. Um, you know, what uh, the churches and medical aid did um, in response to when we found out about this, uh, all the churches, and, and this is kind of rare for Medical Lake, unfortunately, but all the churches actually got together in unity um, and like basically swamped the school board meeting, and they weren't expecting us, and they were so shocked by our, you know, we came prepared with talking points of biblical truth, and, and just, they were so shocked, they didn't even know how to respond, but we basically said, you know, if this takes place, we will be figuring out other alternatives. Uh, we will pull our kids from the schools. We will... Uh, open new Christian schools, we go home school, but we will not allow our children to be subject to this teaching. And, and they were just, I mean, like, money spot speaks, right? And every kid in those schools is worth money to the schools. And if all the Christians pulled their kids out of those schools, and I know it's not an option for everybody, but how much money would they be losing if we took that stand, you know? So, scenario three. Scenario three. A boy in your church, okay, this could go either way, okay, a boy in your church uh, is decides to identify as a girl and begins using the girl's restroom. A child expresses concern about going to the restroom. How do you respond? Yeah. I think that's probably the easiest one of all these yeah. scenarios because that is a biological thing. And yeah. so I would personally just say, hey, you know, I, would, I wouldn't, I'd probably let the child go because they probably are already in there and let them finish. And then I would talk to their parents and say, you know, hey, here's the situation. You know, we know that Johnny did this today. Uh, but, you know, because of his anatomy, we um, would ask that he use the boys' bathroom. Um, and I, I think that would be probably the easiest of the scenarios so far yeah. that, we've, that I've seen because of the fact that it's so, this is black and white. Like, this is something that, you know, we can go, like, no, like, because I think the other part of this too, like, is we are like, we are a church, and we are. God has God has given specifics for us, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, to live by, and I, and I think it does go back into grace. I think that we do have to live in a place, you know, like we're expect. I, I feel sometimes we expect the world to conform to our ideas, when that's not the case. And I think that we do that a lot as Christians because we we put ourselves in this small bubble of I'm a Christian, everybody else is a Christian. But when you really look outside that bubble, you go, there's actually a lot of non-Christians and people who call themselves Christians who really do believe this, and they really do go, this is this is the right thing. Yeah. So it's a conversation. On this situation, it's a conversation of like, hey, it's simple anatomy. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of parents would understand that anyways, of going, yeah, you know, we understand. And if, if, there's a, if there's some backlash from that, I would just, I would, you know, I think at that point, we, you stand for truth. And you just go, you know, here's the deal, like, we love you, but this might not be the church for you then. If, if that's going to cause division, if you're going to leave because of this, then we probably aren't the church for you. So, quick follow-up to that. I totally agree with what you're saying there. And I realize this is probably something we deal with more in youth than kids in the street. But kids are going through um, changes, physical changes, younger and younger. There's a 12-year-old boy that's become a girl now on TV. Um, so, when the anatomy is different, what argument do we use? Because that argument doesn't work anymore once the anatomy has been physically changed. So you don't oh, so have to answer. So you're, so you're saying a boy was a yeah. boy and then no longer has boy parts. They can have the surgery to have it changed. That's, that's tougher. Yeah. Think on that. Yeah. <laughs> Think on that. One. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm watching through it. If Bruce Jenner comes to our church, because I'm walking through it. She gets to use so, the bathroom. We need to discuss it this, this at the district. You know what? It, 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 it does. You're right. And it's something that we need to be talking about. 
but it's also something that we need to be thinking about within the church as well. And so, um, it, you know, it, you're right. It is something that is needing to be talked about all around, all around. I just have a quick question: Is it are they legally doing surgery on yes. children? Yes, twelve year old. In the, in the state of Oregon, a 15-year-old kid can go without telling their parents. Oh, and they, the state of Oregon, And that pay doesn't for it. affect the, the continual growth of them? I would think just the way our body grows. <laughs> I mean, I think we're right, but our body yeah. doesn't well, really it's mature not until we're in our late 20s. There's still growth going on. Conversation needs to be had. That's really what it comes down to. Do you, do you see where we're going? Yeah. Where, do you see where, the, like I said, this is just a start. You guys are thinking, and that's that's what needs, that's what we're doing here. Is you guys are thinking, and what does that look like? I, and I can tell you have something that you're just like itching. No, right here. Well, I, no. Um, in our district, we've already they've already started this year in kindergarten um, teaching kids about. Yeah, I thought it's starting this year. Yeah, for okay. us. Okay. And um, but. It's really tough. Somewhere along the line, we have. I taught a young lady for 16 years. She was born in my church, went all through the church, godly parents, a Christian, spirit filled young lady, go off to college, and when they come back, their values are not what they left with. Mm -hmm. And we we are going to, unless you've got it set up in your church doctrine, you don't have a ghost of a chance to say some of these things unless it's already written in your bylaws what our beliefs are as a church. You're going to get in trouble. And you may get in trouble anyway. But um, it comes back to truth. But I can tell you right now, one of the things that we've done We've been reaching into our community in the last couple of years with block parties. I've had, the first year I remember, God gave us a great day because we have it in September, and a lot of times September is rainy, but the last couple of years we've had opportunities for kids. We had a girl show up who stripped down, and I'm going, oh no, only to realize that it wasn't a girl, it was a, a boy, and all the other guys had their t-shirts off, so they did. When you begin to open up and say you're a church that wants to bring the community in, this is going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to we have to love and accept, but we have to have our boundaries already in place yeah. when this happens. Amen. So if you haven't been talking about it, you need to be talking about it because your kids. I can tell you right now. I don't. If you're in the public school system. Your kids accept the LGBTQ community a lot more than you know they do. Right. Okay? It's not like when I was growing up. It's not like when... And I've got five grandsons from the age of 8 to 13 right now that I'm going, oh, God, what are these kids going to have to live with these next 10 to 15 years? Right. Well, not to say this guy, but just to throw it out there. In what you discuss and you plan and you put down in paper, you also have to include what are the policies for your leadership team right. and volunteers, yeah. the parents that come in and want to participate. In. And if you don't, if not in writing, you're in trouble. Right. No matter what you say. So you just received a resource that comes uh, from Focus on the Family. Focus on the Family has so many stuff out, so much stuff out there. Good resources. Go and check it out. Um, the resource that that has also been um, that I that I used. Uh, you see it in here. Uh, these scenarios adapted from Truth Tolerance. It's another great resource that's out there. Um, but I wanted just to go to, if you go to that last page, there's three main characters of the story. We know the story of the prodigal son, chapter 15 of Luke. Just look at that and, and it, you know, maybe look at where this is coming from because it, it could be anybody. It doesn't have to be an individual that, that, that's a gay individual, as I put in there. But the other two, the other two sides of that is the father and the older son. Those will never change. The older son will all, will always more than likely have the hate, the envy, the jealousy, the pride, the judgment, the bitterness, and the confusion. 
Always. However, when we look at the gay individual, they're always going to, or, or anybody who has an addictive personality, they've come from a hurt background. If you don't have celebrity recovery, can I just throw that out there? Yeah, that's good. Hurts have its hangups. Guess where it starts? It starts with a hurt. It really does. And I've been taking the church, my church specifically, through this and walking through it with myself, with my church. And the, if you can't talk about this kind of stuff in the church, then where can you talk about it? That's what I brought out. I said, if I can't talk about this in the church and freely talk about as the lead pastor of this church and freely talk about the abandonment that I felt from my divorced family. How many other people in that room go? We've heard it today. We heard it yesterday. They're shut up. They, they, they just go into a recluse mode and they go, I don't want to talk about it anymore. And I know we have to go. But the thing is, is think about that. The sun is going to be somebody different. They're going to look different. But the older brother, who's a, who's, who's a believer in Christ, the God, the Father, we see that that's who we want to resemble. That's who we want to be like. That's who we are. And I don't want to use the word striving because then it sounds like we're trying to work for something. And it's not the case. But we are, we are in ourselves becoming like Christ. And what does that look like? It looks like the Father. Love, relief, sadness, grace, mercy, uh, and, and forgiveness. And then I've got some questions there. That's why I put it all here because I knew we weren't going to have time. So here it is. As a church, how will you talk about homosexuality? Take it. As a church, how will you start reaching out to gay community around us? Take it. Are there families currently in your church that are dealing with issues? And how can you start helping them in this journey? How can you start helping them in the journey? I'm not saying you've got all the answers. You don't, obviously, because you're here. And I'm saying I don't have all the answers either. That's why I'm here. And, and so we're just walking this out. Take this as a foundation to starting point and go from there. Let me pray because this was a topic that's – I just – here we go. Lord, we thank you. God, we thank you that you love us unconditionally. And God, I pray, Lord, as, as this is taken back, this, this topic, this, uh, this, um, this sensitive topic, God, I pray that each and every one of us would go back and we begin to talk to our leadership. How are we going to, how do we embrace, but also at the same time, how do we protect? How do we resource our parents? How do we resource the church? And God, I pray that you would just uh, give us wisdom in that. God, that you would give us uh, foundational truth in that. God, that you would speak to us. Holy Spirit, speak to each and every one of us. We love you, we thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.